We got anybody on yet? I don't know. I got to turn the volume down. What do you think, Butch? Well, I think we're going to do some serious, serious dog training tonight. Serious dog training. Yep, yep. Good, Sunday. good. More advanced. Try to see if we can help some people out with. Give a little different perspective on things. Yeah, yeah. From the back end of the sharp end. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, from the back end of the sharp end. We're going to the sharp end tonight. Yes, we are. So we're gonna we're gonna look into a little bit of brushing up some people that are doing. Uh, uh, agitator, well, we call them agitators, decoy or helper work if you're into Schutzen, decoy if you're into French ring, everybody's got their own terminology. Uh, we're going to see what, yep. what do you got? Well, you know, it's just, you know, there's uh, the art of catching dogs. Right. You know, uh, you know, a thrill, it's a thrill, right? So you're out there and you've got a dog. You see this guy out there and he's catching these dogs. You say, man, we're all guilty of it. Put that sleeve on, can I put that suit on real quick? I'm like, sure. I'll get a dog, you know, honest dog out there, and they'll send that dog and you catch that dog and your adrenaline goes up and that fear goes away and you're just like jumping out of an airplane. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. When you got 225 pounds per square inch hitting your arm, you better name believe it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I and, uh, you know, then there's a, the casual decoy, you know. We'll come out there and he, he wants to be the hero, so he gets out there and he's flipping dogs, flying dogs, landing dogs, and it's basically, it's great. I mean, that takes something too. But then, then there's the part where, you know, you're never too old to be a decoy, and you're never too young to be a decoy. Right. You know, and there comes a point, when you catch dogs, and you catch dogs, and you start building a bond with dogs. And you start reading dogs and learning how, you know, there's a lot more to it than just fly, oh, yeah. flipping dogs and yeah. looking cool on TikTok or, you know, whatever media stream you're on. Yep. You get... I know that uh, it's funny you talk about the relationship you build with the dog. Mm -hmm. One of the earliest, uh, well, when I was training old Michelob up there, my, my best buddy, we trained in, in Amarillo, Texas, out at Thompson Park. If there's anybody still alive, remember those days? Uh, howdy. Uh, give me a shout someday. But anyway, we, the, the trainer there and, and that, the head trainer in that club, had a uh, one of the baddest dogs I ever seen. Is a black and tan. He's a she shepherd roddy mix, and he's oddly enough colored just like Bart. And I've always loved this dog, but he was a black. It looked like a black shepherd with tan legs, mm -hmm. and uh, he hated everybody. I mean, Grindel would. So I, it, I, you know, I, I went up there with my dog to to get him to do the bite work and then I'm you know I got ooh I gotta try that so yeah. now I'm catching dogs and so I started catching and one day this particular this this trainer uh Thurman Bill Thurman he would put leave Grendel in the back of his pickup truck go out there and work and the dog was well trained and he'd listen you know and he'd stay in the truck he wouldn't jump out and uh so I'm catching Grendel I'm doing regular and I mean that big bad dude he could he thumped me, you know, but we were training regular. And one day we'd done whatever we were doing, and I'm sitting on the ground. Now, Grendel, like I said, he tried to bite every son of a gun who come around him. And, and he went after me, and he really hated Mick. It was like, who's the bigger dog? Mm. And they hated each other. And then part of that hate Grendel had for Mick, he visited on me. So I steered clear of him when I wasn't wearing a sleeve or a suit. And we were we trained, we'd done everything we were doing that day and we we're kicking back and I'm sitting down, I was literally on the ground. I'd taken off scratch pants and everything and I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden, something he'd never done in seven, eight, nine months, Grendel apparently jumped out of the back of Bill's truck. Someone hollered, Bill, Grendel's loose. And I thought, what the hell? And I turned around to look over towards the truck, and there was Grendel. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and I thought, geez, I'm going to be ugly when he's through with me. <laughs> you know, that's mm -hmm. all I could think of. He gave me a kiss. Mm -hmm. We had literally become friends with me as his decoy. Yeah. He didn't see me as 
as a, an adversary or a mean person. Yeah. He saw me as the person that was bringing him what he enjoyed most. You're a sparring partner. Yeah. Ah, oh, there you go. Good way to put it. Yeah. I was a sparring partner. Yeah. And that meant something. That's to true. Mm -hmm. You do the dogs right. You know, I'll sit out there and take a bite from a dog, and the dog's loose, and they're like, "Aren't you? The dog's out of my head." Duck him up, and it's a yeah. bond. you build a bond. Right. Right. You don't have the leash, but you have. You know, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the question is, tonight, how do you get in that position? Your goal, in the first place, I'll tell you, as a, as we call agitator or helper, decoy, should be to have every dog you train or you decoy for biting like that. Can you get that one? Let me know when you got that one in, okay. Caroline. Okay. So I hear all this. It's all genetic. It's all genetic. And I just can't disagree more. If you do what you should be doing as the decoy or helper, you can get every dog that ever comes in front of you biting, eh, almost every dog, she was super talented. But you can get close to this kind of a bite with most dogs, and we're gonna show you how to start your basics right now. What do you think, Scott? And uh, one more thing, you know, people will tell you they, they taught your dogs to bite. Yeah. The decoys teach your dogs to bite. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. You can never be too old to start decoying, and you can never be too young either. Ah, too young. Hmm. Let's see. Now, I'm going to hold you to that. Can you prove that statement? I'll bet you lunch on it. You, huh? Lunch? Yep. At the crawfish place? Sure. Okay. We're going to Alexandria this weekend, everyone. <laughs> Shoo-wee! Shoo-wee! Okay, let's, uh, let's see what we got here. We're going we're gonna to show you all. One of our main uh, decoys here. We'll narrate as we go through. I want to show you some little bitty things that, that this uh, decoy does. So there we have a, at the time, 10 month old Western Shepherd named Winnie Bits. Winnie Bits. And this will be her first, I think I'm, we may have put this up one time before. This will be her first time. Uh, going after a decoy and wearing a sleeve. Yep. And <clears throat> if you do want to start out as a decoy agitator, learn the skills. If you can find a Western Shepherd to train for your first dog, it'll be a whole lot easier because they they do from the get go. There you go. Boom. Well, I'll be damned. I guess you ain't ever too young to be a decoy, Scott. No. Nope. You just proved it. Okay. You're buying, I'm buying the crawfish. Now, yes. let's stop it right there. Yeah. Let's point out a few things. First, you see how full that bite is? Now, I said this is the first time this dog's ever seen a sleeve or a person wearing a sleeve. She learned to bite that way with the simple little games that we play. <clears throat> almost every day. Mm -hmm. So that's that bite is learned. I've seen some of her relatives who raised by different people in different ways wouldn't bite like that. Mm. The vast majority did, vast majority of them do. But let's look now let's let's talk about agitator decoy 101. You notice when that dog hit Mina our our decoy Back it up, and we'll show you. Okay, now send her. Boom. And you see how she is immediately charging backwards. She completely absorbed that hit. She didn't, she didn't jam the dog. Exactly. At the position in her feet, how she landed in the third step, her front leg was positioned right and her weight in the back leg, so she absorbed perfectly yep. and kept control of a dog in a straight line. Yep, exactly. And you heard what Scott said, her footwork is impeccable. See how, see how she's moving? She's keeping her, her let's call it her, her off sleeve uh, leg to the back to move her. Then as the dog comes around, she spins and continues the absorption. There it is. Now she puts her right back, and here's something else that's little, I've never heard anyone mention this to, to a, a, what they think are decoys in the training, decoy training camp, but you'll notice Mina stays profile the whole way. Yep. 
everybody I see decoying or facing the dog full frontal every time. And a lot of dogs, the problem with that is, is many folds. See how she just moves back, absorbs? That's an easy bite. This dog is gonna learn to hit with all her force every time because she's not getting jarred as a youngster. And she's gonna be more eager and eagerness is gonna trigger the prey drive and prey drive is gonna make for a full mouth bite. So let's go over what we got here. You're gonna have, you need to absorb the bite to keep jamming as minimal as you can. You always want to be profile when the, when the dog goes for the bite. Why? Well, if you're profile and you're working young dogs, you're less intimidating than when you're full frontal. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a narrower target. You're not near as scary to a young dog that may be learning, okay? So... And even though she's, a, she's small? Well, that, yeah. She has contact with the eye contact, and they both have eye, eye contact together. Good point, now, great point, a, yes. A 180-pound, 200-pound male with this dog on the first hits, he wouldn't even be sending the dog, for one. And two, eye contact would be regulated and position would be reversed. Right, Where right. Let the dog come in. You can't overpower a dog when it's young. Cause it's... No, no. Yeah. And, and the other thing about the eye contact, to me, and I see all these, all these guys and these all these different, I guess you call them sports that they have all over this country, that are working their, they all got their sunglasses on or out there on the field being cool, right? They're missing one of the best training tools a decoy has to make a dog bite harder, and that's their eyes. In the wild, or for that matter, up the alley from your house behind the Dairy Queen, or there's wild dogs running around, packs. Eye contact is how you issue a challenge. And when you're staring, when two dogs start staring at each other, that precipitates the fight. So what, what she's doing here is challenging Winnie to bite harder. Yeah, this is on the pull to bring yep. her up. She, exactly. She's, come on, I'm gonna take you, she's looking at her, she's bringing her to her, and now we're just starting here, but on the on the release for the dog, she, she, so she doesn't look away yet, but she'll learn how to she'll look away to the dog's right. confidence. You're building confidence in your eyes. Now there you, you go. How, right. How you right. Use what you have. You're you're doing a natural challenge. You're speaking doglish to the dog. I'm challenging you. I'm going to take your bite away from you, right? And remember, the number one never exception rule in the dog world is if it's in my mouth, it's mine. That's yeah. true. So, right there, Mina with that eye contact, we call it eye effing him, is making this dog bite harder because along with a full mouth, you want a harder bite. So you've got, you've got smooth absorption, you've got a smaller profile uh, target. Uh, then once the dog's on the bite, the work begins to teach the dog how to fight properly. Yes. And she's doing that by pulling away which is taking the bite away from the dog and at the same time using her eyes to challenge the dog and dare her to keep to win later on as scott started to mention you use pulling away and going and giving to the dog to build their confidence more and more but again this is the very first bite this dog's ever done mm -hmm. so now we're going to try what happens when things don't go exactly as planned. We're gonna do a little bit longer sin with that happens. with bits. <laughs> if that happens, yeah. We're gonna do a little longer sin with bits and we're gonna see how Mina adjusts. And we're gonna see <laughs> See how she's pulling harder on that bite, harder on that bite. Okay, back it up again. Woo! Right here? Nope, a little before that. Right okay, here? right there, yeah. Okay. okay, the dog goes. Bump it up a little. She's moving back, trying to absorb, but you notice she ends up going in a, in a half circle. 
This is the way you'll go a lot of, and that's because the dog had a longer distance to run, had more speed, and that extra speed, oh, it's that, ooh, <laughs> that extra speed, when you hit the decoy, the dog's going faster than you can move backwards. So you notice she just takes a quarter turn, okay. absorbs perfect. The dog momentum took her around, she had good positioning and kept yep. the dog and she brings him back in line. Right, and yeah. all, and all, all mm -hmm. no, and now it's not perpendicular when the dog sent, but if you look where she ends up, she's perpendicular, right reverse. She went to 180, eventually brought her to 180 and stood her there. Exactly. Right. Back that up again, I want to see if we can do one little C. Yeah, I think she's, the camera angle's a little wrong to see what I'm looking for, but the dog hits. And she's already now out. Now look, all right, now see that arm's going to going out around her right, right now? Go with it. And she just moves right with it. What happens is, typically on a send, you're gonna have the dog you're going to catch the dog when they're going that fast and you're going to absorb by going in a circle. You can choose to go to your right or your left. If you throw that bite up there and just as you saw her arm go to the outside just a hair, the momentum of that dog's body and speed will spin you around for that quarter or half turn. And even though it's unorthodox or you don't flip the leg, she actually pivoted on her foot and kept her same position when she just caught the dog. Exactly, yeah, and you, yeah, and it's Scott, catch. good point, Scott. As you see, as she moved backwards, she led with her back free foot, the sleeve foot, the lead foot was staying in front. She stepped back, stepped back, and as the dog hit, you put your weight on that back foot, it's behind you, you move your arm just a little to your side and now your back foot, your left foot, is a perfect pole to pivot on. Mm -hmm. And you just spin a quarter turn, set your dog down. The dog is perfectly absorbed. There's no jamming. There's no discouragement for the bite. And when the dog hits the ground, you can see right there, that sleeve is being crushed. And that's what we're trying to do. And of course, she immediately puts the dog on the ground. Of course, she ain't tall enough to keep her off the, off the ground. Uh, but then she starts immediately with responding to the bite, giving the dog a reason to bite harder. See how she pulls it up? That happens instantly. And what's the dog do? She fights back harder to win her, we call it rabbit, to win the sleeve. So Slip. what Mina's doing there is increasing the intensity of the bite. With that immediate in pull up, the dog's worried about losing her, her rabbit, losing her bite. So now she's gonna really crush that bite. So what this, what this kid is doing is A, giving the dog a comfortable hit when it does hit. So it's always encouraged to throw its entire momentum into anybody and anything. Second, she stays profile. And there's another reason for staying profile besides making the target easier for the dog or more likely for the dog to want to hit it, what happens, and you can see, back that up a little bit, and because of, because of physical stature, all right, I'm gonna show you guys something, and gentlemen, you need to listen because most, most decoys are, are guys. So go a little bit, whoa, right there, right there. If you can look, as Winnie hits, her right foot flies up. If if Mina were a man and were facing full frontal instead of to the side, that right front leg of Winnie's would be hitting the, her of a, a guy somewhere that would be rather uncomfortable. And there may be times that you are training dogs without a cup. I ain't talking coffee cup. You guys know what I'm saying. So. If you catch that dog full frontal, just like I see all these guys doing without a cup, guess what? You're paying the price. Yeah, you are. Profile, profile, profile. Your girlfriend will appreciate you. <clears throat> Be thankful. Yeah, so you, You'll appreciate it. Yeah, and you'll really appreciate it. But there again, you see if you just move, your, move that sleeve to the side, and she could have done the same thing and gone to the left but she'd have had to, you know, it's a little longer reach to go that way. 
Uh, if you're moving to the outside, it's a, it's a quarter turn, easy to get to, easy to put down. So your dog's not getting jammed, you're not getting... <clears throat> and when you put the dog on the ground, that's when you immediately go to work. Another good reason, now let's look at, uh, we've talked about what, what you're doing to help the dog, let's talk about what you're doing to help yourself. If you're not working that sleeve or that bite area when that dog bites, if that rabbit's already dead when he bites it, then guess what? He's free to decide on another spot or place to go. And I understand you don't see that happen on dogs that are strictly trained on sleeves. Mm -hmm. And that when that's all they're biting, you don't have to worry about that and, and that, that sort of training. But we're assuming, or I'm assuming here, that you're wanting to do personal protection training. Remember, all of the dogs that I train for the street will bite in multiple places. Yes. So that means if you're not working that bite, say, on a sleeve at this moment, if you don't give the dog a reason to keep biting there, they're going to go find another place to bite that's more exciting. Well, not only that, but then you have, you know, this dog will start typewriting. Typewriting is going up and down like you move your fingers on a, on a keyboard. You, you keep him up and bring him down and keep the pressure on and do the right techniques. The dog will lock the bite and stay on the bites. Yep. You don't got to worry about getting bitten in the elbow or the kneecap. Right. And so a lot, of, a lot of dogs, you know, they jam him, you know, the proper technique or sleeve management or suit management, the dog will typewrite. Right. And it's looking for something to get to. Right. Up or down, up or down. And the, dog, the dogs figure out, though, they'll, they'll keep going until they get what they want. Yeah, exactly. And dogs, some, some of these dogs are smart enough to turn you and get you right where they want to bite you somewhere else. Yep, exactly. More, keep in mind, it's an eight-year-old girl with a six-month-old dog. Yep, yeah, eight-month-old. Eight Ten-month-old dog. dog at the time. Yes. Anyway, yeah. but, you know, this is like, beginners, this is pretty good stuff. Yep. I mean, the techniques she's doing and everything else, the dog's biting great. Yeah. You know, it's just a good pair. They're a yeah. good match. <clears throat> but you have to, yep, let's go to it. Don't start it, just flip to it. Now, hold, hold up right there. Now remember, in, in my school, in, in the guard dog business, it's not all just genetics, it's not all just a breed. It's about the training. One thing you have to realize is just because a dog's not biting at the moment doesn't mean the dog's not capable of it. It just means you hadn't figured out what it takes to get the dog to bite. And we're gonna do things in stages. Step one, easy bite, we're gonna play with a flirt pole. Most everybody plays with flirt poles. Most everybody does some tugs, then they go to a sleeve. And if the dog doesn't bite the sleeve, I have seen trainer after trainer after agitator after helper after decoy say, yep, this dog ain't got what it takes. So, Wrong. yeah, this is where reading the dogs count. And we're gonna show you or at least, again, these are all my opinions. I'm not saying they're right, but, uh, well, but, but you know, they be, work for me. Be honest, you know, dogs get in rhythms. Yep. When they're in these rhythms. Very important. Yep. Okay. And when you change any part of that equation, whether it be, and to me, the most important thing is what they're biting. So if you got a dog on a, on a small, soft sleeve and you put in a bar sleeve, 99% of the time, the dog, We'll spit it out. First bite. Yep. 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 It's not comfortable. It's not something they're they're, they're confidence in there yet. You're building dogs. We're not talking about full blasted police dogs or protection trained dogs. We're just building dogs. So starting keep, out. Keep in mind. So you want to use the rhythm? Question. Yep. I was just asking, I was wondering if you could know the dog is going to hit the sleeve or not her leg. Ah, great point. Mm. Um yeah, here's again, it's all timing. If she moves forward, you'll see a little of this uh, on this beginning dog here. This is a, how old was Aries there, there, Scott? Um, five months. Five and a half. Maybe five four, and a half months. Four or five months. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's another reason to be profile. As you approach the dog, you, if, you, if you're wiggling your target a little bit, they'll, motion attracts predators' eyes every time. Mm -hmm. And for an actual bite, whatever's moving is always, hold it up, put it on hold. Whatever's moving, as you see there, she swings it by is what the dog's going for. 
Now, you do the same thing when you put the sleeve on your arm and you do the same thing when you're in a suit. You pop or move whatever body part you want the dog to bite. Just as you approach the dog, you pop that right in front of him, okay? That quick sudden motion draws the dog to that area as a target. But on that note too, you build up to a uh, suit with a dog. Well, yeah, you don't right, start with right. suit. So basically, right. you have arms, arm sleeve and leg sleeve. So you start training these areas and what you're doing. And when you put the suit on, you come in and, like you're saying, you go for you move your legs. He ain't looking for your arm. He's gonna bite whatever's moving. Exactly. And then when you got him on a leg bite, you come over with your arm and try to hit him, and he should turn loose and bite your arm. To there you the go. Block. Every time. Dog kung fu. Right. And then that's all built up, like you know. Right. But in the beginning stages, like you're saying, and see what she's doing with that sleeve, she's throwing it around. So that's a rabbit to her. Right. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. So the dog is focusing on biting the fast moving target. He's not calculating what to hit at this point in his in his, in his it, training. Exactly. This is this is this is this is kindergarten, it's pre K. Yeah. So now we got a problem. This Pause. young dog kinda holds it and like Scott said, hold it, put on hold. Like Scott said, it's something he never we played Flirt pole with him, we did tug with him, but he'd never bit a sleeve. And when he hit that new object, that new surface, he didn't like, know. He was, yeah. he was hesitant. Yeah, and he spit it out. So, what does the agitator do here? The agitator thinks on their feet. You have to be constantly reading the dog. And she goes back to a surface that the dog's comfortable with. Presents and you see how wide you see how that mouth opened up just like that picture You saw how wide there you go looks just like the picture. I showed you earlier This is what you're looking for you want that looking like a shark and that's that Agitator training not that dog's genetics if it was pure genetics He'd be opening his mouth like that when she was wiggling that sleeve in front of him. Yep. That's not what it takes you must watch and read your dog. Now and she's going to work him in the, in the tug. He wins, built his confidence up. And he's feeling cocky. We'll work a few more like that with him. Mina will present the sleeve to him. He may or may not bite, but at some point, all we're trying to do is get him so excited over, over the, uh, the sack. What we'll probably do next time is work him on the sack first, get him excited, get him excited when he's built a certain level of excitement. Switch it on him. Switch it on Same him. technique yep. that she was doing with the sleeve. Yep. But you get him on and he'll be just pumped up and you just throw it out there and you'll hit it. Boom. Yep, then that's it's, it. It's always that first bite and then you go forward from there. So, I hope, woo. Been fun sitting in the dark with you, Scotty. I'm telling you, man. My gracious. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So, so <laughs> what do you got? Oh, no, nothing. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I I hope this helps somebody working with a dog. All right. I mean, talking to an eight-year-old girl with a six-month-old, a ten-month-old dog. Yeah, yeah. And usually we wait about ten months for dogs to bite work. Right. You know, like you said, the dog is so cold, play everything else, but actually... You know, it's the subtle things. Right, right. exactly. And for an eight-year-old child to look at the subtle things. And figure it she's out. She's not out to flip dogs on YouTube or nothing. She just loves to work the dogs. Yep, yep. And just the subtle things she does, you know, I'm going to be scared of her in about four or five years when she's flipping <laughs> mouths. Yeah, but, she'll, she'll, be, she'll be swinging Great Danes through there. Yep. You but, know, so just remember, it's it's... All right, and we can go into more. If you have a Mastiff that's mostly defensive and slow to respond in prey drive, work the dog in, in, in defense, mm -hmm. and then switch suddenly to the prey drive. You'll build his confidence. If you have a, a Mal or a Shepherd who's just crazy in prey, crazy in prey, work him in prey, but then whoops, our dog under the table here is, work him in prey, but then switch to defense, put stress added pressure on the dog and make him go into defense. That's what makes him bite harder. Remember, each drive has a benefit. Each drive has a weakness. Use them both. 
Now, I have a rule of thumb. Oh, Miss Caroline. At what point will you add some pressure? Okay, that's that's what I was getting at right there. So, what I found to work. Remember, you, you want to use both drives to get the most out of your dog. You want him biting hard. That's what you get out of defense. You want him biting full. That's what you get out of prey. So. Starting with these young dogs, you're going to work them all in prey drive. You're going to get them just confident and cocky. You're going to get them where whenever they see you pull out something to bite, they start going woof, woof, woof. And then at that point, you're going to use the fullness of the bite to judge their confidence. Mm -hmm. When it's a really back to the jaws kind of back to the tonsils, I should say, bite, you know that their confidence is to the extreme then you bring in stress. Then you bring in stress. You can tap them with a little padded stick. You can pop a whip over outside, over their head, around behind them. You, do, you can pull them up and stare at them while you pull them off the ground, their front feet off yeah. the ground. Get vocal. They, they, get real dirty with them. Yeah. Like, hey, what's going on? Hey! You know, just get pressure. Yep, add pressure and you'll see them all of a sudden the agit again, this is where your decoy, your agitator, has learned his skills. If you add the pressure, when their prey drive is high, you don't have to worry about them choosing flight. Mm -hmm. They're only going to choose fight. And they're going to demonstrate that to your agitator by a sudden increase in pressure. And at that point, you put the dog's four feet back on the ground, you quit with the stick or stop with the whip. You do whatever you can to show the dog that that intensity, that extra energy in the bite, that's what you're looking for. That's what makes him win his rabbit, as we call it. Yeah. Well, on one on key note to this, and it's my belief, my opinion only, that you know you can take this how you want it. You can go in your backyard and trap your dog, but I will never work my own dogs. No. Ever. Because mm -mm. you're not going to get the right reaction. They're not going to want to, you know, they're not, they're not the way they're supposed to be. You can't put any defense on them. No. And for the sake of saying that someone comes in your house and you get him and he comes and bites you in the arm to the perpetrator. And that has been known to happen. Yes, it has. <laughs> so, yeah. yep. I mean, to yep. me, yeah. Ford poles are great. Play a lot of tug with your dog. Yep. Let him win. Start developing his bite. Can you still do the out with your dog? Teach him the out? You sure can. The tug. If you know balls. how to do it, yeah. yeah you know is that a question it. or is that yours? Okay. Oh. Yeah. I'll show you how later. Oh, damn. You show me too much? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's just, you know, throwing that in there as a caveat for me. I mean. Captain Wood had a question. Is that when they release and rebite? You know how you're teaching them the, the hard, the prey, when yeah. they're biting hard? Or do they do that in defense? You know, that's after all the, when you're building up and all the pressure is coming in and they're getting where they need to be, that's when you can initiate the rebites. Right, yeah. The re the rebite style uh, of of training is the last. That's that's the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. um, you can in the beginning. It's all about teaching them that they need to first bite really hard and full. That way they got a complete grip instead of just holding. It's like the difference between holding something with your fist and holding it with your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So you want the dog to really clamp down. Then you want intensity. Once you've got intensity. You're going to teach the dog a little more about stamina, and you're going to work on different things that, you know, to, to get it. You're going to teach him to pull more than anything else. That's the most important thing. That's why he has to bite hard, because he's going to be trying to drag 150, 180, maybe 300-pound guy. He's got to bite hard, or he's going to slip off. He's going to tear the surface he's biting. So he learns to pull. Then you go for the bite rebites. You know, and another thing for decoying is you're teaching a dog, but you're also working with the hand and teaching the handler how to handle a dog. And the dog builds up the full capacity that the handler also knows what to do with the dog. The dog performs at 100%. And I like to work with people. Yep. I love working the dogs, but it's, they're a team. I, they're a team. Absolutely. And once you work them, and they work them together, you know. Right. And get them to where they need to be. And you'll start seeing the dog grow, and, the, and all of a sudden the, the handler goes off, and the handler grows. And all right. of a sudden, they become this team, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some good ones, man. You should see me in the beginning, but I was all over the place. But that's not <laughs> the point here. I'm just trying to say that, you know, I'm building a team. 
I'm not, That's I'm it. Very concerned about the dog. But without right. that handler bag, they're holding that dog. It makes properly, all the difference in the world. And they become, and that grows a bond between them. Also, yep. Yep. the umbilical cord you said, the umbilical yep. cord. So and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close with this one. There you go. There, if you're doing, and again, remember, folks, there's lots of different reasons to train bites. If you're doing it for your, your sport, for your titles, for your breeding certification, good on you, go for it. I think it's wonderful, I really do. If you're doing it for a security dog and on the street, good on you. I think it's wonderful, I think it's a great thing to do. But you need to decide what you're gonna do. And if you're gonna be training a security dog, you must, if you're going to a trainer who has you back tie the dog and stand to the side and watch, that's sport. If you're going to a trainer who doesn't show you how to hold your leash, how to move your dog to face one or two multiple attackers, he's a sport trainer. Don't be fooled by these sort of things. If you're not handling your dog you're going to the street to a possible attack half loaded. Shooting blanks? And yeah, shooting blanks. Or empty chamber. And your inability to handle that dog in a real life situation is going to go right down the leash, straight to the dog's mind, and it's going to change entirely how he may or may not act. Dr. Bush, you're putting pressure on that dog to bite harder. When you're doing it, you're also putting pressure on that handler how to cope with that pressure and keep cool head. Yep. Well, yep. well. Anyway, so, yeah. We're we're gonna I enjoy this one. This this, this is our kind of stuff. So I'm telling you. Uh any questions, just add them in the comments later. We'll answer them next week. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we'll do next week, but we're gonna be starting uh, check tune in next Tuesday night. Uh I'm gonna start putting up a I'm gonna try a little series thing here. All right. Um uh, uh dogs and other heroes. There's a whole whole mm -hmm. lot of stories that I've learned over the years about dogs doing things. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about Lewis and Clark's Newfoundland that he went across the continental United States and, and, with. And back. And back. And back, yeah. And we'll talk okay. about some of the dogs who've been awarded wartime medals, uh, amazing feats that they've done in wartime, Silver, capturing dozens of men at a time. Silver stars, gold stars. Yep. Yes. Silver stars. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, check it out next Tuesday. We'll, we'll be putting up the first one. And then if y'all like it, we'll do some regular stuff. Yeah. Till then, I don't know.